Jeff Gear. How are you today? Hi, Anne. I'm so glad I could make it. My name is Ann Glover, by the way. Hi, Jeff Gear. How are you today? Hi, my name's Jeff Gear. That's why she said, Hi, Jeff Gear. Hi, Ann Glover. Jeff Gear. Nice to see you. She's Ann Glover. That's why I called her Ann Glover. Hi, Ann Glover. I'm glad you're here. I am too. I'm here in Hawaii. Did you know that, Jeff? I'm here yes. because I'm doing some shows in libraries. In fact, today I'm wrapping up day 18. Uh, with how many shows? 19. And how many flights? 14 flights. 14 flights. 14 Indeed. flights. Ann Glover has done a record pace. She's been everywhere where humans have ears in the islands. Every library has opened their eyes and their ears to her string figures. She uses them to tell stories in a way that most humans wouldn't even consider, let alone do. She does it publicly, and she's a professional at it. <laughs> she makes stories come alive with string. Like this, for instance. I might start off a show, once upon a time at the end of a long road, there was a small house. And if you go into that house, house yes, higher house, is better for me. Higher is better for you. Yeah. That's pretty high. It may be down lower. In that house, if you go in, because you might be hot after all of your walking mm -hmm. around here. Now inside the house. First off, there's a window. And then, beside the window, standing there on its four legs, just waiting for you, is a yes. chair. Now the chair looks comfortable, doesn't it? So mm -hmm. yeah, you go and you sit down in the chair. You mm -hmm. look out the window and outside you see a tree. <laughs> and in the branch of the tree, something is moving. And as you listen, you notice you can hear something. <whistles> and a little bird <whistles> spreads its wings and flies away. <whistles> Well, you're looking out the window, you see this bird fly by. You notice that inside this little house, beside the chair you're sitting on, there's a table. And on the table, there is a book. Uh. Let me take that book. Jeff, would you hold this book for sure. a moment? Sure, sure. You hold that book, and you open it up, and you see there? What's there, Jeff? It looks to me like my hands. A story. That's story. Right. It's a story. If you read your poems, you'll know it's a story. <laughs> and inside that book, there's this cool story, and that's the story that I might tell sometime. See, that's how I start a show. And that's, that's the way we say, you at home, you can participate. Let's give Ann Glover a hand. That was something I've never seen before. How about you? I tell you, it, she is like a menagerie, like a cacophony. She is like an open book herself. It never ceases to amaze me. I've watched her in several of those uh, 19 shows in 18 days and 14 flights. Mm -hmm. <sighs> She'll sometimes say, mm, I don't know what I'll make a story about. Hey, how about uh, you give me some figures? And the kids do. One of them was a water bottle Wait, in it. Explain. They don't give me figures. They give me things. I say, tell me something I have to make. Tell me things that I have to make. And? They do. They do. And? They say, hey. A dinosaur. Make up a dinosaur. A, wa a water bottle in a tree. Yeah, that was one. That's, that's a new one. Yeah. Um, what's another new one? That's there were recently? nuts or some berries uh, on a string? Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Which you'd never made. No. I mean, these, every, whatever the kids say, I say, okay, I'll make it with a string. Can you believe okay. that? In front of an audience, she makes up the story and makes up the figures to make the strings that tell the story. Do you want to try, Jeff? With a string? Do you know what? This is another thing. Sometimes I'll bring in a, a, a volunteer from the audience, a volunteer who might not realize that they're about to become a volunteer, and I'll say, here, you can do string figures. Put your hand out, your right hand. And I put your thumb, the string on your thumb, and now you just watch this hand, and you do the same thing I do. Uh-huh. Look at that. Like that. So far, we're doing well. Pretty we soon we're doing pretty well. A giant chocolate bar. <laughs> That's good. Hawaiian like a brick. chocolate. Right. Organic. Now, yeah. I'm going to take this index finger yeah. here, 
Oh. And you're going to do the same thing. Oh. Back oh. Right, except yeah. this one. <laughs> He's doing well. I'm this is hot. rehearsed. I'm, oh. Now we've made a little drum. Dum, da, da, dum, da, da, dum, 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 dum. Very nice. I love it. Now. What? There's more. What? You know what? What? I'm going to put my hand here. Yeah? Now. We are going to drop the pinkies and the pointers and keep the thumb loop. I'm going yeah. to keep my hand on the table and we pull this closed. And whoa, it came out different than I thought it would. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just see what happens. Okay. So now yeah. we do what? the same thing oh. all over again. Well, okay. Which is Thumbs, this? I got that much. Index. Thumbs, thank you, pinkies, index. Index. <sighs> Right. And now Short -term I'm going to up through here. Yeah. And let's just see, Jeff. Let's, let's just see what happens. I, I can't wait. We drop what the pinkies, pinkies and the index fingers. Index fingers. And pull the thumb. Huh? And look at that. It's caught my hand. Yeah. Ah! Let's have a hand for Andy Glover. That was a shot. This has never been done before on television, folks. But now, is it the time for a word from our sponsors? I hope so. <laughs> because is there a travel agency nearby? What's the travel agency called? Is it the... Uh, the <laughs> Aloha. Do you need a holiday? Is it time to take a break? Go! Go Buy away! A, buy a ticket. Stop now! Stop! You can go oh, away God. to a faraway place like Paris. It's a mess, when folks. Stay tuned. We'll see if it ever happens anymore. We'll send you on a cruise to Egypt. You can view the pyramids. If you don't like... Aloha, I'm Duko Ishii for ThinkTech News. ThinkTech broadcasts 15 new talk shows every week from its studio in Pioneer Plaza and plays them around the clock. Last week we had several notable shows including a Healthcare in Hawaii show with host Senator Josh Green and Kiawe Aimoku Koholokula of the John A. Burns School of Medicine on Native Hawaiian Medicine. The Arts in Hawaii show with host Donna Blanchard and Neil Milner, political commentator, on his new book the Gift of Underpants, and a State of Clean Energy show with host Jay Fidel and Liam O'Neill of Hydro Tasmania on Clean Energy Down Under. This week we've scheduled some great shows for you, including an Arts in Hawaii show with host Donna Blanchard and Ikaika Hussey of the Hawaii Independent News website and magazine on ongoing news in the 21st century, an Asian review show with host Jay Fidel and attorney Russell Liu who practices in Beijing on Where Have the Chinese Gone, a Think Tech talk show with host Jeff Gear of Talk Story with storyteller Ann Glover on More Talk Story in Hawaii. You can watch our shows live on Ustream.tv and Spreaker.com and on demand on YouTube.com. The links are on our site at ThinkTechHawaii.com. You can download the mobile version of our site from ThinkTechHawaii.com and see our shows on your smartphone or other mobile device. And that's the news for today. This is Duko Ishii for Think Tech Hawaii. Mahalo. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I want to introduce Jeff Gear, our special guest today. He's here to introduce me. Hi, Jeff. Okay, so Jeff is feeling quite hungry. He gets this way when he hasn't had anything to eat. So I'm just going to give you a quick little rundown of some things we can do for food, simple snacks for the kids. Now, Take your two thumbs like this and then your baby finger. This is a giant carrot. It's actually really nutritious, excellent food quality, nutritional quality for the kids. But that's not enough because sometimes they want something, you know, jazzier. So, piece of pizza. Oh, baby. Yep, pizza will do. Yeah. And for those who like the, uh, you know, fruits and stuff thing, though, healthy. We got bananas. So five bananas, got a bunch of bananas. Mm -hmm. The trick is, Jeff, you're only allowed to take one banana. Just one. Just take any one you want. Doesn't matter which one you take. He's just going to take one banana, right? So, Jeff, you can just take one, okay? I'll try. So he takes one banana and he pulls that. And, of course, he did not take just one. He took them all. He's still hungry. So, we have more. Jeff, what? would you like some spaghetti? spaghetti? No. Good. All right. Yes, he's eaten the spaghetti already. And... Darn, what was the other thing I was going to do? Oh, I know, I know. Yes, I just remembered. Right. Just a second. I just need a plate. A nice big plate. Well, yeah, maybe a, a bowl of cereal. No, no you don't later. get a bowl of cereal. This is a plate. <laughs> I'm giving you okay. a plate. There's yeah, a plate. Okay. There's a plate, yeah. There's the plate. Yeah. And what? on the plate, we're going to have something very special today. We are? We are going to have some nice curried orange sauce flavored Mm -hmm. High quality. Really? Organic. What? 
Free range. What? Cotton-esque. <laughs> what? Orange. Yes, I heard that. Because you see, I've been in the libraries this week, and uh -huh. they've got lots of books. They're yes, they do. Shows for kids, and I, after the shows, I get to read for about two minutes. And there's books about recipes, and so this is a recipe I came across. So I'm going to try it out on you, Jeff. I know you're vegetarian, but this one is actually a soy-based product. So we just <laughs> removed all of the actual animal components from this chicken. Has any chicken and been harmed this, in this? No, no, no. no. Yeah. So this chicken is actually soy and cotton. All right, it's it's really fine to eat, and it's a curry, curry coconut <laughs> uh, with orange sauce. You know, Anne, I could yes, hear yes. the audience members <laughs> watching through their screen going. <laughs> You know, I've never seen that before in my life, folks. Come on, let's give it a hit. My God, this is all on Think Tech Hawaii. Now, you might be asking yourself, what kind of tech is that? Well, it's a pretty high tech. Just a moment. High touch, low tech. It's a human made invention. It's the imagination itself with a little bit of a, a stimulation, a little saute. Like your See iPad you there. It? Right. What else do you have on there? Yeah. I, Here's my I, website. That's her iPad. Right. <laughs> so, and you know, yes. I'm, I'm thinking, you know, like this has all really been fun and games, and, you know, we'd love to have you back in, you know, maybe like mm -hmm. 12 years. But just for now, how about a story? How about a story? Yeah. How about a story? That's Let's what I was see. thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you a story. Okay. I'll tell you a story. How about, about that? Here's a story about what happened this morning when really? I went to a library to do stories for public audience, whoever shows up at 1030 on a Friday morning. What kind of people show up at 1030 to Friday morning to a library? Well, it varies, but this morning it was a lovely audience with lots of preschoolers, like groups of preschoolers, mm. preschool teachers and their charges. So there was about 50 preschool kids and a few adults and a couple wait, of moms. Wait, wait. Their little ones. 50 preschoolers? I'd say. Oh, so, I'm starting to get a headache. So there's a lot of stories that is not going to really hold those preschoolers. No. But the string does. So I told a story mm -hmm. about cookies. I said, we went through a long counting thing. Four, five. How many? Five. Five. And then I said cookies. So we went five. Five. Cookies. cookies. Five. five. Cookies. cookies. You at home? I said, here we go. Here's one, one cookie. Here's another cookie. Here's another. You know what? I'm going to make them smaller because you, you I'm people the... behind, you know, watching this, you can get the concept. That's a cookie. This is a cookie. That way I can fit them all in. So they're smaller the cookies, so you just like. Yeah, just three, four. So now, while I'm doing this, yes. the kids are holding their hands up, showing how many I'm doing. And see, the cool thing is, I've got this aspect as, a, as an entertainer, as a storyteller, but mm -hmm. I'm also an educator. So I'm used to working with kids of a lot of different ages. So I know that these little guys really need to have their hands involved in whatever they're doing. Right. So five cookies, and I keep saying five cookies, and every time I say five, they go like that, and every time I say cookies, they go like this. Yeah. So five cookies, and they all go five cookies, like that. Right. Right. And then I show the five cookies, and then Ooh. we've got to do something else with our hands. Now we're going to make, cross your hands like this, hook your baby fingers, hide your thumbs, wiggle your fingers, and it is, what is it? And somebody says, a shark. I say, no, <laughs> it's something that has eight legs, and uh. it's... And it uh, makes uh, webs. That's okay. Never mind. It's oh. a spider. Oh. And so the I was going to say that. Along comes a spider, yeah. as hungry as can be. And what does he see? Five cookies. Five cookies. And he eats one up. Leaving four cookies. Four cookies. And along comes, now we're going to do somebody else. A turtle. Here comes the turtle, as hungry as can be. And what did he see? Four cookies. Four cookies. And he ate one up. And then, oh my gosh, along came an elephant, as hungry as can be. He saw.
three cookies, three cookies, he ate one up, and that left two, and then along came a snake, a snake, slithering along as hungry as can be, he saw two cookies, two cookies, he ate one up, and that left one for me. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't leave you any. So that was part so, of the process, uh, giving them things to do with their hands, hands repetition, repetition along, simple interactive, plot, simple plot. Not making anything too complex, no esoterical issues or anything like that, just keeping it really simple. You know, uh, that simple formula that you have just witnessed acted out so beautifully by our guest, Ann Glover is gonna earn you about 300 years of gigs in preschools because keeping little kids occupied, this is how you do it. And I'm telling you, that's golden advice from one who has sweated in preschools more than most human beings have and any right to. I started out as a teach with teaching grade eight. <laughs> so you're not gonna get away with any five cookies stuff with grade eights, forget it. You're dead in the water. <laughs> Five girls. So, <laughs> yeah, then you lose your job. So instead, <laughs> I've talked to them about where these string figures come from, from different cultures all over the world. And the Navajo have shapes like this that reflect things that have to do with, it's always the uh, Aboriginal cultures all around the world for thousands of years have been doing these, and they always reflect some component of their natural environment. So this is a Navajo figure called Many Stars. Ooh. Sometimes I show it, the kids say, oh, it could be a volleyball net, it could be lots of things, it could be. So it's an abstract shape. It's also symmetrical, significant. A lot of those shapes are abstract and symmetrical. You go to the Inuit in the Arctic, and they have some figures which are abs sorry, uh, symmetrical. Like this one, this is a man carrying a kayak. <laughs> Tricky one. Yeah. I still don't totally see it, but I like this one. I flip it upside down. I do it as a bat. Uh, cool. And the Inuit also have this very complex figure, which is not symmetrical. So here we get into teaching the, I don't know if, what it is here, but in, in British Columbia, grade nine, they get really into um, studying symmetry. So here we see that at this point, this figure is no longer symmetrical. And the Inuit figure weaves like this, and they turn this little tangle of string into a little dog. <laughs> and the dog actually runs across the snow. So you can imagine the Inuit kids love to play with string. And their parents tell them, play with string, play with string a lot, but not too much. Because if you use the string too much, in the middle of the night while you are asleep, the spirit of string figures will come into your igloo, wake you up, take you outside, and challenge you to a race. It's a contest, you and the spirit of string figures. That's why the kids there practice. They do these things with their eyes closed so they can do them in the dark, so that if they're standing there facing the string challenge, the spirit, they can still do it. But it's not enough to be able to do it in the dark. Why? Because you have to have nerves of steel the spirit of string figures does not have a string. He does this. What does he do? He opens his mouth. He reaches his hand down into his belly. He hooks his intestines and he pulls oh. them out. <laughs> and that's what he uses on his hands in this race. So you really want to be solid with your string figures. You really want to be sure you're not overdoing it. Because if you lose that race with the spirit of string figures, there are consequences. What are the consequences? Well, they say that someone within your house within a year's time will go blind. And in the culture we're talking about from hundreds to hundreds of years ago, that would be just about as bad as being dead because people really needed their vision for survival. So that's the kind of thing, the stories that weave and these strings take us all around the world with mm -hmm. these things. Mm -hmm. They weave into folk tales, they weave into 
where people, what people, people's environment and what people valued and how they worked with strength. Well, I love what you were saying about how some of them are abstract and that you really kind of, mm -hmm. you tell them what it is and they go, oh yeah, sure, right. Mm -hmm. And you, I've sometimes, seen you do that a lot. Sometimes they just go, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> Excuse me, right. actually, it's not that. Right. Well, okay, but we're going to pretend it is just for That's the show, right. okay? It's my show. But you were saying. Well, sometimes you do that yourself, Anne. Like I watched her yesterday in Princeville, and she was talking. There was a pumpkin being told by a, a ghost something or other, and she said, and the and the pumpkin said, "Well, excuse me, how how can I know about these things because I I don't exist yet." Because it was a pre-existent pumpkin. It gets a little complicated at times, but that's okay. The little guys were following it because they. She's see keeping the herself face. interested, and it was Halloween. And actually, yesterday. Sometimes ideas just come to me on the spot, and so yesterday I made this little, this is an African string figure, they call it a cot bed. This one has a whole story to it as well, because in the book where I learned this, it uh -huh. said that this string figure was an African string figure that was associated with some kind of a spell, magic spell. And when the Europeans came and they said, whoa, cool guys, what's that thing you're doing, what is that? They didn't want to say what it was because it would take the magic if they said, if they named what this was and explained it. So they just came up with a fake answer and they said, oh, it's a, it's a, it's a cot, like a camp bed. Up, you know, like a simple, upright. Mm -hmm. Right? And so that's how it's gone, that's how it went into the records. So and of course they took it right bed. down and they said that's a folkloric uh, truth. Absolutely. Right. So I took this one, I do it as a necktie sometimes in the story, so there's a necktie. <laughs> But then yesterday it became a jack-o'-lantern because I did this, and there <laughs> you have. Sometimes it's Spider-Man. Sometimes it's a you know. There you go. So. <laughs> right. I see it. Well, there's a lots. Of, there's a lot of uh, things one can so do. So playing with a string can lead to all kinds of different things. It can. Yeah. Yeah. And one of your, you, I've seen her do it in all these libraries. Is she takes the as we started to say what maybe. 30 minutes ago. Perhaps. She, she takes in stuff and, and makes a story with the strings right off the cuff. That's Pretty how amazing. Stay awake. <laughs> how are you doing right now? Good. Me, I feel like I better have a break. I'm really excited about uh, size string fingers we've been having with Hank and Glover. to thank our underwriters. Hawaiian Electric Company and its affiliates Maui Electric on Maui and Hawaii Electric Light Company on Hawaii Island are deeply committed to the communities they serve. Galen Ho is a senior executive of BAE Systems, a global defense, security, and aerospace company. The High Tech Development Corporation, this state's leading technology agency, attached to the Department of Business, Economic Development, and Tourism. Castle in Cook, Hawaii, with a time-honored legacy that spans more than 160 years and revolves around its mission of investing in Hawaii, creating communities, and providing for the needs of our state. Hawaii Gas, formerly the gas company, a proponent of the liquefied natural gas initiative, helping Hawaii achieve its transition to clean energy and a better energy future. Collateral Analytics, a Hawaii-based tech company empowering the real estate industry with greater and faster access to the tools and data they need to make better informed property investment decisions. I'm Nicole Horry. Thanks so much for joining us on ThinkTech. I'm Maria Kashem. See you next time. Well, folks, if you haven't left now, this is your chance because we're back with Ann Glover. She just asked if she could stand up. I said no. She said, I'm going to do it. Well, <laughs> and we said, she said, what story do I tell? I said, tell the one that you said you wanted to tell in the car. And she said, no, I don't want to tell that. <sighs> I didn't say that. Something like it. But I am going to tell it. Cut! Because. Okay. Welcome, folks. If you haven't left by now, you can leave now because now we have Ann Glover. I asked her what she was going to do. I don't know what she's going to do. She said she was going to do something I can't wait to see. How about you? That's what I thought. Well, Ann, what are you going to do? What's that? Stroke yourself. <laughs> Could Hi, you Jeff. Do that in slow motion. No. No. No, not just yet. There she goes. Who's running this show? I don't know. It must be Ann. So, Ann, what would you like it me to do? Him long enough. <laughs> All right, I want to tell a story from uh, West Africa, from the West Indies, originally from West Africa. It's an Anansi story, an Anansi, Anansi, 
and as he is part spider, part human, and he's a lazy fellow, always hungry, does not want to go work for his food, he wants his food to come to him. So, it turns out one day there's an announcement from the queen of the land who says, nobody is allowed to say her special name. She's got a special name. Uh -huh. Regular name, the queen, special name, nobody's allowed to say it. Hmm. But people know it. Hmm. She says, if anybody says my special name, they will die instantly by her magical powers. So, Anansi says, perfect. He goes out in his garden and he picks up rocks. And he puts them in the center of his garden. One, two, three, four. He doesn't say five because that's the queen's special name. And he knows he better not say it. Now, what he needs to do is climb a tree so he can see who's coming down the road. So here we go. Here's Anansi. He's going to climb up the tree. <laughs> and he sits up there in the top of the tree. He watches the road, and along comes Perfect, his friend. Now, you and I probably wouldn't think, oh good, my friend's coming, I'll eat him for supper. <laughs> but Anansi was that kind of character. He's just greedy, selfish, all he, can, all he can think about is what he wants and what he needs. So here comes his friend Turtle, walking down the road. And Anansi says, Turtle, how good to see you. Come on into my garden, have a little visit. It's nice and shady here. But thank you, Anansi. <laughs> I'm, I'm very warm, and it would be lovely to sit in the shade. So Turtle goes in, they sit down, and Anansi says, Oh, Turtle, can you help me with something? Can you just tell me how many stones I've got here in the garden? Well, of course I can. So the turtle begins to count. One, two, three... <laughs> that is no way to treat a friend. Goodbye. So the turtle leaves. Darn, says Anansi. Almost had him. That would have been a good supper. He goes back up the tree. He watches, and along comes another friend. Again. What does he think? How can he take advantage of his friends? It's the snake this time. Slithering along. And Nancy says, snake, snake, come on in. Come on into my garden. Look, it's nice and cool here. The snake comes in. And Nancy asks again, snake, can you help me count these stones in my garden? Certainly, says the snake. And he counts. One, two, three, four. And Nancy, that's no way to treat a friend. And he slithers away. Darn it all, says Anansi. I thought I was going to get one of those. He says, I need somebody who doesn't get what I'm after, somebody not quite quick enough. And he hears a voice in the distance. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear myself for calling. <laughs> this is going to be delicious. <laughs> and Anansi goes out in the road, and there's this chicken walking along, and she's pecking under leaves and poking around under twigs, and she's looking for bugs and grubs and slugs and things to eat. And Anansi says, Chicken, my good friend, how good to see you. Come, come visit with me. Come on, chicken. <laughs> uh, me? Yes, chicken, my friend, come on over. Let's have a visit. <laughs> oh, Nancy, are you talking to me? Chicken, my dear friend, <laughs> come on in. <laughs> uh, Nancy, you've never spoken to me in my whole life. Well, Chicken, that's just because I was waiting for today. Come on in. <laughs> Come on in. Look, I have a nice, comfortable, shady spot for you. Have a seat. Well, actually, I'm not seeing. I, I'm very hungry, and I'm busy looking for bugs and grubs and slugs and things to eat, so I'm just going to keep going to... No, 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 chicken. Come on. If you come in my garden, if you can just help me with one little thing, I'll give you something to eat. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> That's very kind of you. I did not know you were so generous. Why, thank you. So the chicken falls for it. She follows Anansi into the garden. And Anansi says, oh, chicken, just tell me now, how many stones are there here in my garden? Oh, <laughs> oh Nancy, I'm, I'm not very good at math. Oh, no, it's okay. You can do it. You can do it. Come on. 
then of course you know what I did. Well, I came here and I told you. Mmm, baby. You're very talented. We here on, on Think Tech Hawaii have really enjoyed having Anne Clover and her many voices and characters entertaining you at home in her inimicable one-way style. Thank you again. Inimicable? Like you mean like nobody could like it? No, everyone liked it a lot because they've never seen anything like it. Thank you, Jeff. Great. Thank and you, Tech. Hot, hot, what is this? Think Tech Hawaii. Think We're delighted to be here. Tech. Let's all say it together. Think, Think Tech, Tech Hawaii. Hawaii. Glad Thank you're you. with us. Mahalo. Mahalo. Aloha.